God is the God of the impossible and there's nothing he cannot do for you. And we're so glad you're joining us for Hope Today. I'm here with Tom Hollis and Angela Madden and we have an exciting, incredible conversation that is gonna rev all of us up in our spirits today, Angela. Yes, we do. Asbury, Brownsville, Toronto, Azusa, Wells. Does anything come to mind when you hear these places mentioned? These are just a few locations that have seen and been marked by revival. Among believers, there is a growing awareness for the need and an increasingly stronger desire for a national outpouring of his spirit. Today, we will sit down with Jesse Green, a passionate revivalist who had a prophetic vision of seven waves of judgment, deliverance, and power crashing over America. I cannot wait to hear about what Jesse has seen is coming. And truly, I'm praying it's a whole lot of revival. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know, I, I just love hearing about, you know, what's going on. God wants to do something. God's up to something. We talk about things personally a lot and we should. God wants to do things personally in your life. I hope he's moving today. Maybe you need prayer. You can always call our prayer line, get prayer with someone, but God is doing something nationally as well and internationally. It's, it's, it starts on the, the personal level, of course, with revival and in fact, revival of ourselves but then there's a national move that God wants to do too. You know, I'm just gonna, I have, now I've said this before, we are in it. Yeah. That God yeah. is truly on the move. I know every move of God looks different. And so I think like you see, you know, with Azusa and Wales, like they all had a distinction. There was all something that marked them differently. And in this move that I truly believe that we are in, that is hitting our cities, hitting our families, hitting our nation, hitting our world, it looks very, very different. I mean, Angela, I've just been so encouraged by just seeing what's happening in churches. Yes. I know my own church where I'm just seeing young people who are coming like never before, who are yes. like, I want to be baptized there's an infilling, just when we allow the Holy Spirit to move and we say, I am getting out the way because yes. I really believe that with the pandemic and with COVID, God was just saying, enough is enough. You can no longer maintain your churches the way that they are. Move out of my way if you want to see my spirit. It's really a heart condition and us really relinquishing control in this hour like never before. I agree. And I love that you said that, Sid, about it already happening and taking place. We are seeing evidence of that. Even here in Pittsburgh, watching pastors lay down their personal church and their agendas and the things that they have going on to say, hey, this is about kingdom. Let's gather together, seeing truly that the fields are white with harvest. Tom, to me, it is an unprecedented thing that we are seeing in this very city. And I agree, Sydney, in this nation. Well, revival is the beginning of the things that God wants to do in the lives of those that are unsaved too, yes. of bringing them to the, the, the knowledge of Christ. So it's gonna be a great discussion and a great uh, time of ministry. So just stay tuned for that. Right now, stay tuned for Stump the Host. So we have not seen these questions and we hopefully know the answer. So play along with us. Here's the first question. How did Zechariah tell the people the name of his son? He, he wrote it on he a tablet because he couldn't uh, speak. Yeah, he yeah. wrote it on a, he called for a pen and paper and he wrote it down and <laughs> made his own little sign. Uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right. <Yay! laughs> all right, there we go. We got one. Okay, here's the, this, this answer, the answer was his name is John and he yeah. wrote it on a tablet coming yeah. from Luke 1, 6, 31 and 63. Yes. Hello, somebody. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to this next question, okay? Which woman gave her young son to the temple to grow up in God's service? Isn't it Hannah? Hannah, Hannah. yes. Yeah, yeah Hannah. I think we're, yeah. I think we're right, we're yes, going with Hannah. that. We're gonna go with Hannah, <laughs> so this was, in, this was Samuel, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, it was, yeah, how about that? We're two for two, Sid, yeah, we're doing all right. Good. You guys yeah. are great. Yeah. 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 Hope you're two for two out there. Let's see if we can go three for three. Last one. God told Abraham that his offspring would be as numerous as what two things? The stars and the sand. Yes! The stars and the sand. We gotta go. Hey! <laughs> God! <laughs> Easy today. We're on fire today. I feel like those are kind of easy. I'm gonna be honest. I think hey, those were a little easy. I'm okay with oh, that. Yeah. Very, <laughs> you hear that? Neil and Dave, they put out the challenge here. They're saying they're too easy. I didn't say so. they're too easy. I just feel like they're just easy. I just felt like it was. Yeah. I didn't anyway. say too easy either. Listen, keep those ones coming. We like that. <laughs> well, I have a question for you. Do you look around and hear the news reports and wonder with a bit of concern what's coming next to America? 
Today, we will sit down with Jesse Green, a revivalist, prophetic voice, and author of her latest book, Saturate, leaving behind status quo religion for a faith that really works, to discuss a powerful vision Jesse had highlighting what's coming to America. Jesse, welcome to Hope Today. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to chat today. We are so glad to have you on. Now, Jesse, we'd like for you to just take a few minutes and share a little bit about who you are and really how did you become a revivalist? Yeah, my story is kind of a weird one because I feel like I talk to a lot of people and they go to ministry training school or they kind of look up to revivalists and want to go in that direction. Um, but for me, I... Honestly, I got radically saved in my apartment in New York City. I encountered the real power of God. And I had this light bulb moment where I just was like, wow, Jesus is really real. And if I can have a relationship with him, what's more important? And I was working in the nightclubs in New York City. And so my like first thought was, gosh, so many people that I work with are struggling with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and uh, they don't go to church. They they just feel like it's kind of dead. And I just thought to myself, gosh, if they knew that Jesus was real, that he was powerful, maybe they would want to follow him too. And so I started doing street evangelism and ministry in nightclubs. And uh, that kind of led me on a trajectory of really discovering the gifts of the Holy Spirit, um, learning about honestly just preaching the gospel and what the gospel really was. Mm -hmm. And then it, it was in 2018, I was praying one year and the Lord just said to me, he said, Jesse Green, he goes, you're not an evangelist, you're a revivalist. And I, I very much feel like I was commissioned by God. I actually had to Google what is a revivalist because I had no idea what one was. And I ended up finding Charles Finney and just reading all of the books that Charles Finney wrote, who led the Second Great Awakening. And that was pretty much my school of revival. And then the Lord had me end up leading beach revivals and tent revivals um, around the country over the last two and a half years. That is phenomenal. From a nightclub scene to being commissioned as a revivalist. Well, I love diving into your book, Jesse. It is so powerful and so good. Why did you write this book and why now? Yeah, so I actually, I've written two books. The first one is called Wildfires and that book is really about the story of starting revival, leading revival, and also the trials in revival. And then um, that book did really well, but yet, right after we were leading the beach revivals in summer 2020, I saw this really profound vision. I was woken up at three o'clock in the morning and it was this vision of seven waves crashing into America. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up, I wrote down what the Lord told me each wave was. And I shared the prophetic word online and it created, it got so much momentum. Um, I'd done several interviews about the word and as I spoke to different friends and prophetic mentors, they were like, Jesse, you actually should take about two years to steward this word and put it into a book because they're like, this word is accurate and it's actually essential for the days ahead that the body knows what's coming. And so that's why I wrote this book, which is more of a prophetic insight into the days that we're currently in, as well as the days that are coming specifically in regards to revival in America. Jesse, what are those seven waves that you talk about and which wave do you believe we are in currently? Yeah, so the first wave is called wheat tares and the remnant. Um, that's a separation of, if you know the story of the wheat and tares, the separation of the, the good things that the Lord has sown and the things that the enemy has sown going up together and the remnant. And I believe that began in summer 2020. We saw a lot of that through the global pandemic, a lot of exposure. Um, the second wave is the resurrection of the unborn. And that includes the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And I had this vision in 2020. So when that happened, I was like, whoa, okay, this is like really all happening and it's happening quickly. And then the third wave is the prophetic showdown, which is a wave that I believe that we're currently in. 
as well as the fourth wave is national repentance, which I believe that we're just starting to enter into that right now. So literally even last week I was in Houston, we saw a repentance breakout. We baptized over 400 people just last weekend in Houston. And there was just reconciliation of families, healings, deliverance, and just massive repentance happening across the room, just like by the power of God. And then the fifth wave is the cleaning of house, which is God, again, doing a deep cleaning of his bride, of his church. And the sixth wave is mass exposure. And then the seventh wave, which is the last wave, is pioneers and frontiers, which is, I believe, the beginnings of renaissance and reformation as the Lord establishes himself to be the king of this nation. And this again, being one nation under God. Jesse, those waves are so powerful and I love how you go into them more and more here. Would you explain to me this prophetic showdown that you feel like we're in right now? And do you have any kind of unction as far as the timeline of these seven waves? Yeah, so one thing the Lord has told me is, and I, this is not good for book sales, but it's just what the Lord is doing. But um, he told me that it was going to be from 2020 to 2030. So this is a 10 year word. Um, obviously, we'll see ripples of that, I think, throughout history in the days ahead. But um, I believe that these things are happening more urgently than we could have anticipated or expected. Um, but in regards to the prophetic showdown, what the Lord showed me in that wave and that part of the vision was there was going to be such an increased rise of outwardly like satanic and witchcraft displays just out in public things that you would just never imagine you'd ever see but with that out in the open and i'm not talking about in the church i'm talking about out on the streets out at award ceremonies out in public there's going to be prophets that rise up that are completely uncompromised that have consecrated themselves not for fame and not for fortune but really just are prophets of the lord and they're going to move in such power like we saw in elijah and they're literally going to call out these fake gods and we're going to actually start to see on the news um on youtube on social media these displays of power where literally the new age movement the satanic temple witchcraft their power will not be able to stand against the power of god that we see on display and from that many people are just going to turn and be like whoa like i was re deceived i had no idea like i thought i was just like manifesting my dreams i had no idea that i was worshiping these false gods and they would turn and start to worship the one true God who is Christ Jesus. You know, Jesse, just hearing that, uh, I know recently there was a Satan con, a Satan convention in Boston where a lot of Christians went out on the streets and actually many hundreds of people came to the Lord wow. through, you know, just that, that yes. confrontation you're talking about. But I'm wondering what, uh, you know, uh, where you see like what just recently happened with the revivals in Asbury and on some of the college campuses. Do you see that as fitting into part of what God is doing in, in, the, in the waves that you saw? Yeah, so one of the things that I wrote down, actually part of the first wave, and what I love about this is if you've ever actually watched the ocean and sets of waves, when a waves crash in, it actually is absorbed into the next future waves. So they're actually all connected. But what I believe is that what we're seeing on the college campuses is actually part of that first wave. It's that we and tears and that remnant movement that's happening. And I actually don't believe that, you know, there's a lot of controversy on this, but I don't believe that this is a one generation revival. Um, I travel around the world and I see the Lord is touching every single generation yeah. as well as every single um, type of person. Every nationality is experiencing the power of God. But I believe that um, in college campuses specifically, um, there has been such a mixture when it comes to theology, when it comes to the power of God. And so I believe what people are seeing and what's being highlighted in places like Asbury 
is just that return of like, wow, God is real. He is powerful. This isn't just a good idea. This isn't just something that my parents told me about, but I'm actually having my own personal encounter with the Lord. And it's it's just igniting every generation that we're seeing from the very, very young. We're seeing five-year-olds mm -hmm. crying out in repentance and being baptized to people in their late 90s um, giving their life to the Lord. And so I, I think that it's sweeping every city as well as every generation. You know, Jesse, I wholeheartedly agree that it's not just one generations, but it's all these generations that are running together, that we are just seeking the face of the Lord, having the fear of Lord just fall upon us. I know just seeing on TikTok, I mean, it's just what you're just sharing, like what the Lord has revealed to you in terms of like the witchcraft, and the new age. I mean, there's so many young people and older people that are saying, I was practicing new age and I'm reading tarot cards. And I've met people recently that said like, that was me. And then recently God just delivered them and pulled them out of it. And so Jesse, just I just wanted to ask you, you know, what other things is God putting in your spirit has spoken to you about saturating the kingdom of God in the season and what shakings are coming to us as the body of Christ and to the church? Yeah, so I, I don't say this lightly. I actually say this with the fear of the Lord on it, but I really do feel like the Lord for our nation specifically in America, if you're watching this and you live in America right now, I do feel like there's a line being drawn in the sand and it's something that my husband once said that really hit me was, you can't be 99% a Christian. You have to be all in. Christianity is an all in. You give your life to Jesus. He's the King. He is the Lord. And I believe just for several years as American Christianity, um, we've just settled to kind of have our love of Jesus. We, 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 we love our salvation. We know that we, we're going to go to heaven. We want to be forgiven of our sins, but we still want to live for ourselves and live the way that the world is telling us. And I just believe that because of that compromise, that's why we're seeing so much darkness and perversion and just really demonic agendas all across the earth. And it's happening as the church is growing, as the church is um, being established. And so I just think that the Lord right now is giving us a chance mm -hmm. to return to him fully. Um, that's what revival is. It's that return to your first love where you realize, man, the things in this world, they're not going to satisfy me. I need just Jesus. And a part of the saturate word is, you know, we're actually seeing mass baptisms happening in the last yeah. two and a half years. We've baptized over 15,000 people, which is a lot of people to baptize in muddy fields in Kentucky, on um, beaches in California. I mean, we've ruined church carpets with just water everywhere. And it's this thing where um, I think the cry of revival we see in Luke 3 and Acts 2, and it's when the people hear the true gospel, they're cut to the heart and they say, what must I do? And baptism is that invitation to just go all in. It's messy. Your makeup's ruined. Your hair's ruined. But it's like the most um, humbling experience because you're wet. You're like, everything's ruined. And you're just like, I don't care. I just want to give Jesus everything. And what, out of those baptismal pools, out of the ocean, out of the horse troughs, we're just seeing people you know, experience that power of the Holy Spirit. They're getting filled right on the spot with power. There's mass deliverance. Literally, we saw 30 ears opened, like deaf ears opened in just a moment. And I think that that's what we're seeing is the Lord saying, listen, I am real, I am powerful, but you need to be all in. And so I believe that's the invitation. And I, I have a fear that if we don't take this seriously, we will be a nation under judgment. And I believe that this revival is God's loving kindness towards us to prevent that from being so. Jesse, to the believer who's watching and they feel like, you know, I've been baptized, I'm going to church, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the thing. When you say all in, what could that look like for them today? Yeah, so something that I tell people all the time is, Repentance isn't this one-time thing. It's not a one-time altar call. I actually, every time I take a shower, I simply even just say in the shower, I say, search my heart, God. Like, 
-hmm. Like we saw David said, he said, search my heart, find within me. Is there anything in me that offends you, God? And you know, a lot of times I will even just pray, God, what is it that you're doing? And how can I realign my plans, my finances and my schedule into alignment with what you're trying to do? Because yes. I think that we don't realize that the baits the temptations, even the apathy can just kind of sneak in. And all of a sudden, two, three years later, we're like, why am I not about, like, not as passionate as I used to be? Mm -hmm. And I think it's just because, because of social media, because of culture, we're just being lulled to sleep. And so when we need to lay things down again, when we need to be all in, I literally will take my debit cards and my credit cards and I'm like, Lord, in my bank account, what am I allowed to keep this month? And what are you calling me to give away? We've given away three cars. We've sold all of our possessions three times already. And I just feel like the Lord just wants us to continually be in a position where nothing would cause us to give him a no. Jesse, that is so good. And actually, I want to I wanna go to a verse. Uh, we have a verse on the program almost every day. And this was one you suggested. And I I want to I want to get your let you minister in this area, but it's John 10:10, 10, 10, a verse that we've heard a lot, but I think it really uh, is something we need to share today. And it says this: The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Just taking that verse. Could you just share with us what God has ha put on your heart concerning that? Yeah, this is one of my favorite verses, especially for revival. I feel like that's like the creme de la creme of like what's happening in revival. Because what we see is people come to these gatherings and they've been stolen from. A lot of people are struggling with suicidal thoughts. You know, dreams have been destroyed. And I tell people, I'm like, if those things have happened in your life, it's just an indicator that the enemy has been on the move. But those are not the promises of God. It says that the Lord came to give you life and life more abundantly. That means excessive life. Like you should be living fully alive, full of the power and love of Jesus. Not just a one-time experience, but every day. This is what Jesus died and rose again for every single person to experience. And so this is why I love to see deliverance happen where the enemy is deceiving people and all of a sudden the power of God comes and the enemy just has no authority anymore where Jesus is or where suicidal th thoughts are. All of a sudden someone gets a vision of who they are and what they're called to do in Christ Jesus. And it's like the lights get turned on. And I just love seeing that exchange happening over and over and over again. And so we even advertise like, if you're struggling with anxiety, if you're struggling with depression, like this is the meeting for you. And I'm like, bring all of those things to our events that are creating death and destruction in your life and leave with a revelation of life. And I believe that as we pursue that and honestly get to war a little bit, where we're like, listen, the enemy is not allowed to steal from me. He's not allowed to destroy my family. And we get a little bit aggressive about that. I believe that we will become ambassadors of the life that Christ Jesus wants every single person on this earth to experience. Jesse, thank you so much. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your words today. And thank you for your amazing book. Again, it is Saturate, Leaving Behind Status Quo Religion for a Faith That Really Works. Thank you for coming today. Yes, thank you. Wow, that is powerful. Yeah. Revival. Let's go. Yeah. 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 And I just have to take this moment to say, where do you, where do you see yourself in that? Where do you see yourself? You know, you tuned into a program today, but this is a hope program. And God wants you to have hope today. And that's why, that's, that's why we named the program this. 
is that God has something for you today. He's moving the things that Jesse was sharing, the verse that we read, the things that God wants to do. He wants to do them in you and start in you. So take this moment right now. Take this moment and, and, and say, God, I, I, I felt that. I feel it. When Jesse was talking, I feel it. What would you have me do? Because really, when we lay all the things down, when we lay them down and say, God, I want to I want to lay this down that I might experience the abundant life that you have for me and be revived. That's when we begin to see the change. Yeah, you know, just as you were speaking, Tom, that God just dropped in my spirit is that the scripture that says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what we really have a problem and an issue is that we don't fear him. We don't reverence him. Just take a moment to think about that that sometimes I feel like we just really just treat God like a genie and we just, there's such a seriousness, just what Jesse was just sharing, the prophetic words that she shared about the seven things that he's moving into this nation, that he's calling in this season and hour. And if you're watching it, don't just, you heard that word for a reason. And I just truly believe today that God is calling us to a place where we will push our agendas out, that we would move all distractions and the busyness, and we would get still before the Lord and sit at his feet and listen to what he says, listen to what he's speaking, because it's out of that place that when we fear him, when we're in awe of him and we don't have to say anything and sometimes I don't have to lay down my whole prayer list. I mean, it's good to share the things that you know we're going through and walking through, but I truly believe that we are in a season where God is just saying, I need my people just to sit at my feet and to be still and to listen and to hear what I have to say because there's divine instruction, there's divine revelation, there's divine insight that you can only get when you fear him, when you seek him and you put your agenda down. It's a season that we lay aside our pride, our agendas, everything for him. So today, just as Angela was saying, are you all in? Are you willing to lay it all down and to sacrifice and to lay the ultimate price because of what Christ has done for us? That's what he is calling us to do today. Angela, final thought. I just want to pray for you really quickly. I pray that the God of this universe would be more real to you than ever before, that every dead place would be awakened and every dry place flooded and saturated by his presence. In Jesus' name, may God fill you and consume you today with new hope, with new life, and truly a vision for your future. God bless you. On tomorrow's Hope Today, building bridges between the Christian and Jewish communities. President and CEO of The Fellowship, Yael Eckstein, shares how her organization is making an impact by serving and sharing the gospel with the people of Israel. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.